Good morning. Hope everyone enjoyed their first session that they went to. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the chat for the presentation. Since this is a presentation regarding Pear Deck, we are going to be using Pear Deck to present. So if you would like to be part of the interactiveness of the Pear Deck, you can go ahead and join there. And before we get started, I know we had a couple of people asking in the last session about attendance links. There are no attendance links for this session. But if you go ahead and click on the link, it's going to take you as a student to our presentation. And it will show you a little bit what it's like on the student end of a Pear Deck presentation. We're gonna go ahead and get started to honor your time. And that'll get us a chance to, towards the end, you'll have a chance to play around with Pear Deck and hopefully get some ways to look at it before you head out this morning. So when you are ready to present it, give you this little bit to show and it has the code, always has a really funny saying with it, green muffins, openly notice warm kangaroos. And it kind of shows you what you have going on here. So it's showing you that you have 10 students are connected and you can start the class whenever you are ready also has a direct link that you can drop in the chat if you're having this through Zoom or a way to push the link out to students. So if I'm ready to go ahead and get started, you can, people can still join as I've started. I will send the link in the chat again in a second. But if I'm ready to start, I'm starting with my presentation and it looks like a Google slide and that's because it is. So that's the great part about using Pear Deck is that it's integrated through Google Slides and it gives you a chance to take pre-existing slides and modify them with Pear Deck. So that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at today, ways to increase engagement with Pear Deck. My name is Tawny Ditto. I'm the staff development teacher at Rosemont Elementary School in Gaithersburg. And this is my eighth year overall. This is my fourth year using Pear Deck. And if you are familiar with Nearpod, this is very similar to it. So you'll see some very similar features, ways to integrate it. So if you are familiar with Nearpod, Pear Deck will be pretty seamless to start using as well. In the chat, feel free to drop your name, your school and your role at your school so that I have a little bit of an idea as to who's here today. Some names I do recognize though. So thank you for stopping by. And while you're doing that, I'm going to type chat one more time for people to join as a student. All right, so as you can see, when you're presenting as the teacher, you will have different features that of course you can, that the students see. So as you see mine and you see yours, you'll see a little bit of differences. Of course, the biggest thing is the teacher dashboard. And I had my dashboard open, but I'm gonna reopen it in this tab. It opened in a whole new section. So what I can see here, I see the breakdown of my slides. In real time, I'm able to edit it. I'm able to make changes on the fly, which is great, especially if you're one of those people like me who thinks of something, you're like, oh, I should do that right now and then act on it. And you can also see your students. I will disclose 
that at the beginning when you did sign into my uh, to my Paradex session, it did ask you of your mood. And that's just something that it does, which is kind of nice, especially for our students, checking in with our students, seeing how they use. It's kind of cool. I like that feature, but I am going to just show this for the sake of showing the features. So please don't feel offended. <laughs> but as you can see, it does show you the mood gauge. It does have you going through with your .NET, your Gmail account, which is great. I like using that as a way for students to, to be able to save their progress and to show when I pull data reports, I can show you know their work through their account. I know it's them. I know it's that student who did that. And then I can also see who the teachers are. Now you might think, well, of course, well, Tawny should be the teacher in this, but I can also invite a co-teacher. I can have multiple teachers. So if I have my ELD teachers, my special education, any a para I'd like to include, you can send them the link to it and they can join it as well and help moderate the session. So again, already a lot of ways that you can include and engage people. So going back to this, as I'm presenting, you'll see I'm kind of going through the slides, but at the same time, I'm showing it on my screen, but you're also following along. Whatever I push out to you as the instructor, you are seeing it on your screen as well. You can't go back and forth. You're, stri you're strictly on the slide or the page that I'm showing. So by the end of our little meeting today, I am hoping that you have been introduced by the Google to the Google Slides and Paradex sidebar. We're engaging in a discussion about the various features of Paradex, viewed how to host a Paradex session for student participants, explore the creation and editing of a Paradex integrated lesson, and completed the participant survey. So if you have signed in and you are one of my students on the Pear Deck presentations, you have the option to draw or type two things you already know about today's topic. So of course, our topic today is Pear Deck. On your copy, draw or type two things you already know about today's topic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to share the link one more time because I know there were some people that just joined. So if you want to be part of the student participants, feel free to do so. And one of the things that I'm gonna do is, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot or anything, but I do wanna show the features. So thank you for your patience and participation. But as you can see, you can switch to your responses. So what you would see here is you have a bottom section that says show responses. I can go in and I can view my responses. So this is one way that you can do it, where you're kind of scrolling through looking at them, but maybe you don't really like that view and you wanna see the grid. So the grid's kind of nice because what the grid does is you can see all of them, you can see them in real time. As you can see, they're popping up on my screen as people are editing and going into the Pear Deck and giving their responses. And then you have this, which isn't really beneficial if it's overlaid because all it does is it takes everyone's and lays them together. Sometimes that's useful, especially if you're looking for cohesiveness. But in this case, we're going to see a range of options. And then if I want to, I can lock people's screens. So whatever they're working on, I can freeze it and they're no longer working on that. And that they can't edit it until I unfreeze it or unlock it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my presentation. And that's a quick way to go right back. Other things I can do, if you look down here, you have the three dots, very similar to going to up in your Chrome settings. You have some things that you can work on. So again, you can make this in full screen. So again, pushes it up to a full screen view. You can open up your dashboard. You can open up your dashboard and new device. So one thing I like to do is I liked having my slides presented on the Promethean, but then I had a secondary device where I had my teacher dashboard so I could see what students were doing, but I didn't necessarily have it displayed. And then let's say we're working through our lesson and we were just so engaged in discussion. Everything was going so great and well, but we ran out of time. And so what you could do you don't have to, but an option that you have is that you can take it from instructor paste to student paste. So the remainder of the lesson could actually be used at a student's own time. Okay. So that's just another option. 
And if I'm finished, I can end the session and the session will turn off and it will be exited from all the participants' screens. So think about it. Why use Pear Deck, right? Well, they have a lot of options that you can use to integrate and engage students. So students can be in the lessons. They can be part of it. They can be showing their learning. They can be part of things. And that's really the biggest piece of it is student engagement, of course. So to do that, you're really already using something you're familiar with, with just Google Slides. And if you have ever used the Nearpod add-on, it's very similar. So what you would do is you would open the Pear Deck add-on through the add-on menu. In their add-on menu, they have a bank, I'm not even lying, a huge bank of interactive slides from their library. And what you can do is you can edit them to best serve your students. There is another key to this is that you have to click the present button to start your lesson through Pear Deck. Now, if you started through Google Slides, like you're presenting it as a Google Slide, your Pear Deck features are not going to be integrated into your lesson. And that's a little bit tricky because what happens is when you go to present it through Google, you're not turning on the Pear Deck add-on. It's there, but it's not being activated and you need to be presenting it like I'm presenting it now. You'll notice the difference because we know when we present in Google Slides, it looks a little bit different than when I'm presenting now. So you definitely want to look for this bottom bar where you're presenting through Pear Deck. You've given students the code. If they didn't have a code, they're not going to be able to use the features. You may see them on your slides, but you will not be able to actually have the students do the draggables or the drawing features or any of the things that you've added on. So this quick video goes over just very briefly. It's very short. It's about a minute that goes over parts of Pear Deck just to get us started and to get us thinking about what all the things we can do with Pear Deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that real quick. After this ad. There we go. I to tell you that you can add the power of Pear Deck to Google Slides. Imagine if you could engage every student in your class. What if you could see instantly who's with you and who's struggling to keep up? That's the power of Pear Deck, a formative assessment tool designed by teachers and integrated with Google Classroom to support 100% student engagement. Pear Deck brings your slides to life with interactive questions that can be added to any presentation. We're making it easier than ever to bring the power of Pear Deck to your class. Start with Google Slides, get the Pear Deck Google Slides add-on, and add interactive questions or formative assessments throughout your slide deck. When you're ready, be sure to present with Pear Deck. Your students will join your Pear Deck session from any device with a web browser. Direct them to PearDeck.com slash join and enter the session code to begin. As you advance your slides, students will be prompted to answer your questions and their answers will appear on your teacher dashboard in real time. Answers can be displayed anonymously on the classroom projector. So instead of worrying about getting the right answer and feeling silly in front of peers, your students are putting ideas out there in a safe, anonymous way, discussing and learning from each other. And that's just the beginning of what you can do with Pear Deck in Google Slides. 100% student engagement is just a deck away. So the biggest part of that too is that it creates an environment where students are able to take risk and answer questions that they might not get correct or they may not know. And that's okay. Because what happens is it's showing if our students are understanding the content and if that learning is being transferred. So that's a great tool because even though when it's presented and you're seeing students answers on the screen, the students don't know who said what, but when you go into your teacher dashboard and you can pull up the data, you're able to see what students said specifically so that students aren't being put on the spot necessarily. They don't know who said what, which is kind of nice because again, that allows students to be able to answer honestly and to answer with what they know. So what you would see when you go into Google Slides, now this would be something that started from scratch, but you'll see it looks exactly like Google Slides. The only downside to starting from scratch is it seems very overwhelming, but you can certainly take something you've already started. Maybe you have a really great Eureka lesson that you have through slides and you wanna add in pieces. 
Paradeck isn't necessarily meant to have the whole lesson be a Paradeck lesson. You can still have elements of it where you are presenting and you don't necessarily need the students to be using the tools on every slide. So really it's up to you to determine where you wanna put in those pieces for students to be engaged. And it gives you an opportunity to be in control of how you want your lesson to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you from my, this would be my template of what I'm presenting you with today is that when you go in, you have your add-ons tab. Now this is already there, it already exists. But one thing that you may not notice is that you only have what you have added as an add-on. So for me, I have Nearpod and Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on already because I've used them. But if you have not yet used them, that's okay. What you would do is you would go to get add-ons and then you would look for it. And as you start to type Pear Deck, it actually begins to show up. So you really don't have to type much. Now, of course, since mine is installed, it's already there, but I would go into type Pear Deck. I'd click on it and then I would hit install. And then that would add that to your Google Slides. And then once you've added it as an add-on, it's always going to be there. It's not going to go away. It's not going to disappear one day. It's going to stay there. You don't have to add it on every time you go in the slides, which is nice. So when you're ready to add anything with Pear Deck, you would go here to open Pear Deck add-on. And then it's going to open up their bank of resources and templates. What's really nice about it is that they have this set up in a way that makes it kind of easy to find what you're looking for. So if you aren't really clicking here yet, but you wanna go down, maybe you want to ask your students a question. Maybe you wanna start with an activator or a way to start a discussion. You have different ways that you can get students to elicit responses using text, drawing, multiple choice questions, Draggables, draggables are pretty cool. We'll get to that in a second. Another thing that's pretty cool that's a little bit newer is that you can add audio. This here, you can actually record yourself talking. So maybe you want to record yourself reading a, a passage from a text or reading a Eureka application problem. You can do that. Or if you wanna upload a file of audio, you can do that as well. This part here with the Adobe is a little bit newer. We do not have licenses bought for this, this partnership. However, there is an opportunity to purchase, not really purchase, but it's a free membership for classrooms. You would have to look through the website when you click on this, but that's a way to integrate Adobe and Pear Deck, which is pretty cool looking. But in order to access all the things that we're talking about today, you do not need to have any of this. This is certainly like a next step. If you are familiar with Pear Deck or you get comfortable with it and you want to do it, you know, do your lessons a little bit more intensively with some integration of technology, this is a good way to go. So if you scroll back up, this is kind of where they have this bank of resources. The way they have it separated is by areas of what you're trying to get from your students and what type of audience. So you have your beginning of lesson, during, and your end of lesson. So if you're looking for something such as an activator, and this is where I got mine from the beginning, draw or type two things you already know about today's topic, then I would click on that. So when I added this, one thing I can do is I can go in and change the topic. Slides are editable, and I can go in and I can change the prompt. I can change whatever I'm trying to get my students to respond to. The only thing that's not necessarily editable is some parts of the template itself. Because once you start to change things, it does affect how the responses are received. Let's say I want to get a gauge here of how my students are doing. How is the homework assignment? This is just something that it has as a default, but I can change that. So how are you doing? And then when I present, my students can drag their response about how they are feeling using a thumb up or thumb down. So that's just one way that you could do it. Of course, there are tons of ways. And let's say I'm thinking more about a math lesson and maybe I want to take an application problem and I wanna put it on a slide and have students solve it on there. 
A good recommendation, of course, as you look through, you can see the templates and what works best, but the drawing slide is definitely a good way to go because that gives the students the ability to use text box or drawing tools. And what you can do is seamlessly put in the problem the students are solving, and then when they have it on their screen, they can solve it on the Pear Deck, and that information the students write is sent to, you know, you have it, and it's in your, you've collected that data. You have that in your dashboard, and it's saved at the end of your session. So you can start with a basic show, or like I said, if you already have a great lesson and you want to start in pieces, either will work. As you continue to go through, you have your template library, which is where the shells of everything are already there. Really your responsibility for this would be to change it to what makes sense for you and what you're trying to teach or get your students to get to. And with that, you have the bank of options and that's where you're pulling in. Now, really, it doesn't have to be some elaborate lesson either. You could even use these as a morning check-in. You could use it at the end of the day. It doesn't necessarily have to be for a lesson. It could just be for a community circle. It could be for a time where you're talking with students and just getting, you know, at the beginning of the year, getting to know your students. Any, really anywhere you can fit this in. As you can see, they broke, they broke it down into categories. So they definitely have our, they're thinking of our SEL times to tie in, you know, conversations about what we're thinking, what we're feeling, or those times where we're critically thinking. So it's, the options are really endless, but the nice thing is you decide how that goes. Draggable slides are not just a one fits all. Draggable slides are any of the slides that have a dragging option. Some of the draggable slides have like the thumbs up, thumbs down. Some of them have different tools that you would move where you're dragging. It's not necessarily they all look like this thumbs up, thumbs down, but this is a great way to gauge how students are feeling, what they're thinking, checking for understanding. And again, this is just one way that you can use a draggable slide. Another draggable here is which of these doesn't belong. Now, of course, you can change the prompt and you can make this quadrant of anything that you want it to be. One of the things that I think this is a good idea for is definitely trying to find ways to integrate it for our EML students when it comes to vocabulary acquisition and finding, you know, perhaps which of these doesn't belong in terms of vocabulary, especially when we are introducing vocabulary rich content through our benchmark curriculum or our Eureka content. And like I said, their purposes are endless. So you are the person who decides what that's going to be. You have the template, but you are controlling what the question is asking or what direction this is going. Another one that students really like is the drawing feature. Students are able to draw. Of course, having the touchscreen Chromebooks is great because that makes it a little bit easier. I do know with the older Chromebooks, it's a little bit tricky. So I did often offer a paper copy for students if they if we had anything that had a drawing feature I just had them draw on paper if they felt like it was a little bit more simpler for them to do because sometimes drawing on the computer is a little bit tough unless you, the touch screen makes it a little bit easier but again it's about knowing what your students needs are and of course you know knowing what you know the capability of the technology you have but the older Chromebooks it was a little bit tricky to do but again you're determining what your steps are and how you want that to look, but you can use the drawing for anything. It doesn't have to be about illustrating the setting. You would go in and change the prompt. It could be their drawing, what they saw on their nature walk. It could be anything that you change it to. One of the reasons I wanna stress this again is because you could make this really awesome Pear Deck presentation and then you go to present it and you click the wrong present button. And then your features are useless because it's not integrated into it and your students don't have access. So when you're ready to present, you must click start lesson in that green Pear Deck add-on button. First time users, so when your students use it for the first time, they're going to need to give permission for their .NET or Gmail account to be, to be linked to it so that when the, the student completes their work, it's linked to that account and then it's, you are able to access that and see that, you're seeing it's linked to that student. And then when you want to pull data, you know it connects back to that user and their account. So when I was showing you my dashboard earlier, I was showing you that you could see the email was connected 
So that's what you would see. You would see your student's name and their email. So like I showed in the beginning, I had this already up. You could see where there was the link, the joinpdpairdeck.com and then a code. Now, the other thing is, especially if you are on Zoom or you're in a virtual setting where you can push out a link, I like to give the direct link as well. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky when people are putting codes in, but they try to give you this little flashy saying to kind of, you know, get the student to know what their code is. It's a little silly, but as you can see, if you were here at the very beginning, as you saw the, the speech bubble that the pair had actually updated with the amount of participants as my participants started to join. And it will tell you, and that's how it keeps track. It'll tell you how many students you have, and then it will tell you if they are in the session or if they clicked out, or if they're off. When it says they're offline, that means they're no longer in the session. Once students join, you don't have to necessarily present your screen. I like to present my screen because my screen is always up on my Promethean board. They're following along with their, screen, their screen. It's the same thing. And then I like to have a secondary device where my dashboard's up. I don't really want my students seeing my dashboard. They don't really need to. It's mine to really keep track of my students. But I like having the presentation up on the Promethean as well. And then that's where you're kind of keeping track of what your students are up to. And like I said, we looked at a little bit earlier, but let's say I'm looking at how my students are doing. I wanna make sure they're following along. I have my students, let's see. And let's say I have a student who, you know, is, is maybe, you know, being, I might wanna, you know, maybe I wanna block them from the session. It might be a, a time where, you know, I no longer want them in my session. So there's just a couple of different things you could do. Again, you have the options here, but really you don't necessarily have to do all the things where your students are, you know, they're interactive, like I said, because when we get to certain parts, you don't really need that because you're still going over content, okay? And so when I'm in my dashboard, anything I click on in my dashboard, let's say I'm here, I'm jumping to that in real time. So it's affecting what you're seeing. Does everyone notice that? So I'm gonna go back to here and there's my, this is my presentation mode, this is my dashboard. It looks a lot like Google Slides, but you can tell it's a little bit different. So now I'm here. And when you're hosting a live session, that's really the biggest thing is you wanna determine what's best. Do you want to host a live session where everyone's on the same page and everyone's with you in the moment? They can't go forward, they can't go backward. Or do you want something that's student paced for independent work or for homework, asynchronous work? So when it's student paced, as we know, the students are controlling the pace. So if you've ever used Nearpod, it's very much like that where students have the ability to go into the lesson and go through the slides at the pace that works for them. That can be done at any moment. You can make it and a whole separate student paced lesson before even presenting it. Or if we don't get through our content and I say, you know what, maybe at home you go through the last couple of slides and I'm gonna turn on student pace mode and you can do that for homework. So there's a couple ways to do it. You can certainly do it in real time. Now I wanna change to student pace. Now it's no longer me in control. You can go through and look at everything at your own pace. The biggest thing about this being, of course, through Google is that it does seamlessly integrate to Google Classroom. As we know, we, we did shift a little bit away from Google Classroom when we started using my MCPS Classroom or Canvas. There is not a plugin at this point like there is Nearpod, but you are able to, of course, share the link in the code. This is one way I did it. It seemed to work fine for me and for my students. So I took a screenshot of the join code and then I linked the joinpd.com link. And I also would link in the student paste or not the student paste, sorry, the student link. And the student link already is embedded with the code. So it just goes right to the exact lesson. They don't have to enter the code. You could do either or whichever works best, but I would do it that way because there wasn't really any way to embed it into my, my, my MCPS classroom. And so this was just a way to get them to it. 
and they were able to access it. I was, it was a way for me to push it out to them. But if you still sometimes use Google Classroom, you're more than welcome to use that plugin. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to plug in. But with my MCPS Classroom, you can come up with some creative ways to get them to it. Sometimes just posting the direct link is fine. However, you know, it works for your students to get them into that. So right now, I wanna give you some time to explore. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Google Slides and open the Pear Deck add-on and explore the options that we have. This is a good time to ask questions because you might run into some things that you're wondering about, especially since I will say it is a little overwhelming because there's a, there's a lot going on. So what I'd like for you to do is if you haven't already added it, that's okay. You can go to get add-on. and then you would search for it. And then install it. So if you need help with that right now, feel free to ask, but right now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can check my chat. Yes, I'm gonna be sharing the Google Slides actually at the end so that you have access to that because I did include some frequently asked questions and some tutorials from Pear Deck. So I will be sharing that as well. So you will have everything I shared today. But right now, if you go into Google Slides, you wanna make sure you add that add-on. And then once you add it, you can start looking at all the templates. It is a little overwhelming just because there is a lot of options, but the nice thing about it is once you start to see it and start to use them and get kind of a feel for, you know, what works for your students or what your need is, then you can kind of, you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable with, you know, putting them into your lessons. It's really about, you know, what works for you and what you're trying to get out of it. And the biggest thing I do encourage is that when you do present it and, you know, you're thinking about what you want to put into it is that you don't want to overload it. You certainly don't want every slide to be a draggable. You don't want every slide to be something that is having your students consistently interact in there and it gets the meaning of it gets lost. You really want to use it purposefully so that your students are engaged in a way that makes sense. And if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat. So hopefully as you're going through, you have found some ways that you think would be a good way to reach your students and to get them participating. 
And this is a little bit newer, the even more activities and lessons in the content orchard. I like that they call it that since it's, you know, Pear Deck. But this opens up kind of a whole new portal of some teacher created resources and some things that are already in use and some things that you can take and you can consider in your own lessons. So this is already, like I said, pre-made things that students can certainly use. You would have to look through and of course, you know, preview these different resources. You can also download them and change them to fit, of course, what you're teaching, but these are just some things, but just real quick, one of the things, and like I said, you don't necessarily have to keep it, you know, content-based. You can certainly use it as a check-in. So there's definitely ways to have students share how they're feeling and, of course, maintain that anonymous response so that, you know, you can see how that student's doing, but the class doesn't know how they're doing. You know how they're doing. You can check in with them. You can have those conversations with that student. So that's kind of nice. So as this loads, you can use the content and then it's going to open. It's almost like making a copy of a slide. And that's, again, it, that's where it gets a little tricky because it's so similar since it is part of that platform. So just be mindful that when you are bringing those things in, just the key is when presenting it, you wanna present it through the Pear Deck add-on because otherwise all those awesome features you will not be able to implement. And that's the downfall of it because then you're like, wait a minute, why can't you use the drywall? Because they weren't able to do it. And Jean, I have your slide loading now. I'm looking at it to see what's going on. Thank you so much. And I know Thank we're so I know we're getting close to the end. So I definitely want to honor, like I said, honor your time. And I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to explore, but also ask questions. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask. And then we'll go from there. And then just to reiterate all the awesomeness of Pear Deck, Pear Deck is, can already be used for existing presentations. So if you have something that was already made, you've already used, but you love it and you want to keep using it, but you want to add in some ways to engage your students some more, you can already take what you have and start adding it in. You don't have to make a whole new slide. You don't have to make a copy of it. You can just start using the features, adding it back into that lesson. You can also customize the questions, as you know, there's the audio feature and then you have, you know, the presenting option. The other part about having the students log in, and I said this a little bit earlier, was that when it's linked to an account, it's great because then the students are in that, their responses are being tracked and monitored so that if you want to pull reports, you want to pull up how a specific student did on this particular lesson, you can go back and say, this is how they did. And you have that data, you have their answers and their responses. So if you come up with any questions or you're running into some problems, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help you. I have no problem troubleshooting, trying to figure out why something's not working or how we can get it to look right or act right. Because sometimes the templates, they're a little bit tricky, especially if you're not presenting them, you don't know how it's gonna act yet, or you're in the moment, you're like, wait a minute, why is this not looking right? Or why is this not you know, acting how it should? I'm more than happy to help. There are some great resources that Pear Deck has. They have a ton of tutorials, which is great. I'm a very visual person myself. So I, in the beginning, I watched a lot of videos to see how I could do those things. And then I did them on my own. They have some frequently asked questions. They have a lot of different stuff that helps you. They also have a Twitter page. They have social media 
So they're always posting ways that teachers can integrate. The orchard is, like I said, is a little bit newer. So there's templates already made for certain things. And then of course you have your pre-existing lessons that you can tweak and even make better. And then of course we have our participant survey. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link in the chat for that. And then I'm gonna put the link also for the, for the slides. So you have the slides that I presented today. There's the evaluation. And then I'm gonna put the link to my slides so that you have them. It has all the tutorials, has all of that good stuff. It also has my emails in there in case you need it. So Jean, when you're looking at it, I see that you added it as an option, but it Yes, and it was funny, like when I first brought it up, I was able to put the answers in, but not the mm -hmm. um, question. But now I see, I didn't really play around with it much, but I see in the notes, it says like to edit the type of question or choices. So, um, and then when I hit start lesson, it looked, um, let me see, I can, I feel like I'm going to try it now with instructor, but when I did it with student, it's loading, but I could just mm -hmm. see the responses, not the question. Yeah. Cause the slide's blank. So I'm wondering why it's not showing anything that you have, or did you take everything out of it? Um, oh yeah, now it is totally blank. Um, originally I could see the choices. So maybe when I started okay. that troubleshoot, maybe then I erased it because I pressed choice. Try again. Um, it saved them. So I'm just going to put update. I'm doing instructor piece, but um, for some reason, yeah, I don't see them either. All right, I might have you share your screen so I can see it. That might help. Okay, thank you. But so if much. you have completed the evaluation and you are good to go, you don't have any outstanding questions, have a great rest of your day. Hopefully you're able to use it in some capacity. There, like I said, there are opportunities for integrating. This is endless. So please feel free to reach out. If you found a way to engage your students and something worked really well, feel free to reach out to me and let me know how that went because I'm, I'm excited to hear that. I'd love to see it in action. And I know we said we had a PE teacher here. So even in PE, we can certainly use that as well. So mm -hmm. there are the options are very much endless. So have a great rest of your day. And I hope to hear from some of you. And Jean, I think, let me see. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make one on my end too and see what comes up. I'm gonna see where the, is. thank you so much, Tani. Yeah.